In the world of pawnbroking, there's one shop that likes to do things differently. I'm just in love with it. You can have your 90 grand. Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, art, almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. Some of the bags I have can be upwards of £20,000. Based in Wellhilled, Surrey... I think I've got a handbag fetish. ..with a roster of asset-rich clients... There's a gift from Sheikh Fatima of Abu Dhabi. Yeah. ..desperate to get their hands on ready cash. This is absolutely amazing. Prestige pawnbrokers specialise in luxury goods. What the hell is it? But with huge loans... It's a hovercraft and it belongs to James Bond. ..come huge risks. Moon rock. It's actually from the moon. ..high tension... I can't even talk. ..and difficult decisions for the team. There's a market for it, but is it a market of people we want to find? Welcome to the world of posh porn. Across Britain, pawnbroking is a booming business. Hello, ladies. Hi. And based in Surrey's wealthy commuter belt... Did you actually buy it from Chanel? I can't even remember when I bought it. <laughs> this pawn shop deals with the exclusive top end of the market. It's not unusual for us to examine a piece of jewellery that might be worth a million pound plus. So I've got something here that will knock you bandy. Oh, wowzers. You'd be looking for 100 grand for that. We will loan against almost anything high-end, as long as it's legal. You're looking for 1.75 million. Six carrots? Oh, my God. The business was started by millionaire James Constantino in 2009. Some people haven't got a thing for money. I actually quite like it. It's not a dirty word. Obviously, I like nice things, so if you don't go to work, you don't get nice things. I'm a ducker and diver, really. I am ducker and diver. James spotted a gap in the market, delivering fast cash to his asset-rich neighbours. The recession was hitting. All my chums had big houses, flash cars. None of them could get any money from the banks. I just thought, what a great opportunity. The sort of clients we have are all high-end. They've got the cars, the houses, the art. But diamond rings don't buy groceries. That is ginormous. Oh, I'm trying you. to get it off. With a reputation for loaning against the weird and wonderful... These 17th century executions acts. I haven't got the handle of it, my no. <laughs> James needs a team just as diverse. Am I swearing too much perfume? Not enough, in my opinion. <laughs> I think they've got quite a good sense of humour, the team. You're such a dick. <laughs> I think it's key to have a sense of humour when you're working with people all day long. Do me a favour, put that other glove on and moonwalk out of this office. <laughs> <laughs> this area of Surrey is known as Britain's Beverly Hills. It's the perfect place for a pawn shop that specialises in luxury goods. Retail, how much? About £81,000. And with Surrey's glitterati on their doorstep... I wonder if you can help me. Staff never know who'll come calling next. OK, James. Yeah, thanks for your call. Well, that's good. We've got a guy called James. He's, uh, he's a footballer. He's got a business idea. He wants to get off the ground and he's coming in with some watches. He's got some Rolexes and some other bits. Oh, that's good. You yeah. remember the rules about f uh, footballers coming here with stuff, don't you? What rules? What, the it. offside rule? No, they, I need to see him in their full kit. <laughs> and I need that. to assess the legs. Oh, yeah. Before we can decide whether they are really a true footballer or not. Can he be wearing his kit and could he just nip in the back quickly and I'll just have a quick look? You want him to nip in the back? <laughs> You're a bit not... forward, aren't you? <laughs> He's only popping in to do some watches. That's disgraceful. Last one, last one, last one. Control. Bring it in, in and out, in and out. Let's go. The owner of the watches is 21-year-old James, who trained at Chelsea's Elite Football Academy. Back you go. Always football, football, football. There is a lot to sacrifice for the lifestyle you have, but it tends to be worth it when all you want to do is play football. Signed for Chelsea at uh, eight, which is really young. Um, uh, so I was there the whole way through the academy. I was always rated a very good player at the club, one of the elite ones. Kind of every young kid can go home and say, oh, just... Had a training session, ate lunch next to Frank Lampard. At 17, James was kept on by Chelsea and put on a salary of just over £70,000. You live in your dream. What's better than waking up, having a nice cooked breakfast, kicking football around and being home at one o'clock, you know? So obviously, as a young player, we're going shopping every day. We've got Emporio Marni here, which we bought on Bond Street. We've got, um, we've got this jumper from d and which is about £200. Which obviously I've got on Bond Street again. Once we got set a challenge in the summer to uh, go home and learn how to skip whilst doing kick-ups. That was the only one that seemed to be able to do it. So I was 10 or 11, 
it's a, it's a nice memory of myself. But just after signing his professional contract, disaster struck. I snapped my knee, um, 17, my ACL, and then I fractured my back go-karting, obviously, um, on my 18th birthday, and then uh, my calves finished me off when I was 20. James's football career was over before it had really begun. All I've known since I was little was football. It's obviously your dream, and it's something you love, you know? And when it goes, people... <clears throat> You just dedicate your whole life to something, you know? It's your whole childhood. You don't go, you don't, you don't go to the parties. Oh, I can't even talk. After years of operations and rehab, James is now focusing his energy on developing a high-tech business idea. Hi. The side pad you want to click craze. Congratulations. Oh, oh, thank you so much. An interactive <laughs> app for smartphones. Oh, thank you. The general public um, compete to complete my challenges, which are tasked. And they do this uh, by taking photos and videos on their phone. First one to complete them all wins the prize. So uh, it's a little race. This is all my eggs in one basket. If this goes wrong, I'm in debt. With everything invested in his business, James is turning to the pawn shop for the extra cash he needs to market his phone app. These are the real deal, so I bought a couple of Rolexes when I was 18 off a, off a friend. It's one of those things, a lot of footballers go and buy Rolexes. Ideally, I want to raise above 10 grand, you know, I want 10, 15,000 pounds. If I get more than that, happy days. But will the pawn shop think James's watches are worth enough to fund the PR his business needs? Hi guys, how are you? Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. I brought some watches in to get them valued, hopefully to look at selling them. Is it James? Yeah, yeah. Hi James, I spoke to you on the phone, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. It is quite interesting when someone maybe famous walks in or someone that's a footballer. It just livens up the day. What are you actually looking to get to, James? I want between 10 and 15, you know, for all of them together. OK. Well, the watches are lovely, so we'll do some work on them and uh, we'll see how we get on. Perfect. Cheers, mate. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Cheers. cheers. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. The pawn shop offers loans of seven months against any item of value. Hi, morning. Pawnbroken is simple. People bring their items into us, we value them and offer them a loan based on those items' values. So you're looking for a loan of £1,000? You can redeem this any time in this seven-month period, pay what you owe, and that's it, you get your items back. If you don't come back for your item, you will lose it, OK? Yeah, that's fine. Right. 40, 60... We pride ourselves on being quick, and within half an hour, you can be leaving with hundred grand. Today, James has had an inquiry about a collection of vintage jewellery. OK, Ryan, I'll wait to hear from you. Thank you, bye. Well, she sells, sir. Uh, all right, she's uh, got two bracelets and a diamond necklace, and she's going to come in next week. She's only local. How much does she pay for them? I didn't get that information out, but I didn't want to put her under too much pressure. I think she was driving at the time, and as you know, driving and talking is very dangerous for a woman to do. What do you mean, for time. a woman to do? At the same time. At the same time as what? Driving You're and trying commenting to talk. on a woman doing more than one thing at a time, being a man. You're making that comment. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes. The owner of the jewellery is Rana, who lives in South London. She's my other little baby. My passions are antiques and dogs. Wee. Dogs probably come ahead of everything else, actually. You're my soulmate. He's a complete and utter guard dog. If I was a burglar, I wouldn't come into this house with him around. I'd be petrified. I have two sons. My boys are my, are my life. After my dogs. Who's there? Who's there? Son Andy is an entrepreneur. He employs his friend Jordan, supplying mobile corporate hospitality. We thought we'd just come round and uh, sort one of the bars out. Yeah, go for it. Andrew has bars. So we're going to make that corner. There we are. Which he's designed and he rents them out to people. All of these we make ourselves. Mobile slash portable bars. You can practically to a bar anywhere you want. I went to a fair recently and he had a bar up. I'll give that wipe down there as well. So come on. And I took pictures of it because I was, and I actually put it on Facebook because I was so chuffed. Come on, Andy. Jordan, lunch is ready. Andy? Yeah, I'm come coming. On. But like any new venture, Andy's company needs funds. I need a bit of a cash injection. Ideally, I'd like between the five to seven thousand pound mark. 
the more money I get in injected into the business, the, bit, the quicker I can grow. Rana is keen to invest in her son's future. Fritz, so you can't have any. He has the same ethos that I have. We're both workaholics. I don't think he's ever taken a day off sick in his life. Yeah, very proud of him. Cheers, Mum. Pleasure. Come on, Fritzy, should we look at these? Come on. To get the money Andy needs, Rana's approached the pawn shop about selling some treasured family heirlooms. This piece here was my grandmother's. It's absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. The other things I've got are these here, which are two bracelets. These belong to my mother's mother, who I was very, very close to. They are just stunning. I could pawn them, but I'd rather just sell them and move forward in my life. If I got 30,000, that would be sufficient. I just would like to see him be successful. You never know, he might end up being a multimillionaire with it. In which case, I will want to return. Of course, it's not just the clientele and high-end jewels that make this pawn shop stand out from the crowd. Good morning, Prestige. We get offered some really unusual stuff, and some of it is quite ridiculous. Um, but it is a little bit of a challenge, and I do thrive on that part of the business. James has just received details of an unusual item that's going to be hard to resist. Oh, look at this. Look, I own a genuine James Bond hovercraft that was built at Pinewood Studios for the Bond film, Die Another Day. You can see the demonstrations videos on YouTube, and he's put a little link. So let's oh, have a little brilliant. It's bloody mad. That's an incredible bit of kit. Right? Oh, I love them. I really want to go on that. You can't have a go on it, Joe. <laughs> it's not really for girls, that sort of thing. Oh, what a ridiculous thing to say. Once the initial excitement dies down on some of these unusual items, the second thought that comes into my mind is, how the hell am I going to get rid of this? It's no ordinary pawn shop. What do you think of it? Looks like a heap of junk to me. <laughs> Based in affluent Surrey, it deals with big ticket items. So you could actually borrow anything up to 100,000. Hello. Morning, ladies. How are you? And very wealthy clients. It's a really pretty looking ring. But now, boss James Constantino has plans to expand his pawnbroking empire. It's really exciting times for the business at the moment. We're opening up a new store in Hatton Garden, and me and Joe will be going up there, and that will become the new headquarters for the business. There's a real buzz about this place. Yeah. It's going to be really good for us. We've got to refurbish the store, get it open on time, get all the phone lines put in, the security, everything. So it's a real stressful time for everyone involved. In preparation for the big opening, James has also been looking at hiring new staff. Really difficult to get people to come in here from a jewellery background and say, look, today you're going to be looking at a watch, tomorrow you might be looking at a submarine. James's first recruit has been brought in to help run the Weybridge shop. I'm quite a sort of relaxed character. I'm quite laid back. I'm, I like to have a laugh, but I'm also very professional in what I uh, do. There's just one problem. He's also called James. J-Mo, we've decided to call him. It is J-Mo, isn't it? It's Australian for James or Jamie, but it's going to be so confusing with two Jameses. We thought of Janice, Janet. And you're also known as Jimmy or Jim. He is. He actually quite likes J-Mo. Oh, I only asked you one question. <laughs> he's a funny character, so he's a bit quirky, but we just liked him, didn't we, Joe? Just one word. Yes. Hi, I'm James. I'm uh, first day in today. OK, um, no second. Is it J-Mo? Yeah, J-Mo. 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 <laughs> oh, good. Bring you in. It's James. Oh, hi. Hi, James. good morning, James. You? Nice You're to right. see you. How you been? Yeah, fantastic, James. yeah. My expertise is watches. With over 15 years' experience in the industry, a watches is one of the sort of backbones of my knowledge. And with that in mind, the boss is setting J-Mo his first test. I've got something for J-Mo here. Oh, Panerai. Appraising the watches brought in by former Chelsea footballer James with a little addition. This is a plant. And it's actually not genuine. It's not a plant, it's a watch. I decided to put a fake Chanel into the mix. It sounds a little bit mean, but I really did need to know if J-Mo knew his stuff. That, that looks like shit. 
<laughs> bit of slippery boss. Jamo, come down a minute, mate. I've just got something for you. How you been? You all right? Yeah, I just saw some stuff upstairs. Yeah. Good, good. Well, look, we've got a client coming, lovely fellow. Oh, nice. Used to um, play for Chelsea. So he's got four watches there. And get back to me with some numbers, mate. Okay, that works. See you, yeah. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Right. Okay. Excellent. Cheers. Slippery, very slippery. I'm never trusting you again. I think it's nice. It's nice to put people through their places and... I'm you... never trusting you again. Can okay. you value this bottle of wine for me? Yes, I will. I'll get back to you, OK? Cheers. Lonely Against Luxury Goods is how this pawn shop made its name, but it also regularly deals with an array of curiosities. Meet former glamour model Michelle. Bo, can you bring the helium canister, please? And her ex-military husband, Bo. So, you gonna earn your keep? That's what I like to see. Start them young. We've got three girls, Poppy, Petty and Pebbles. They're all flower babies. Our little rhyme always goes, the Poppy had the petal fell off onto the pebbles. It's always mad in our house. <laughs> our children are our life. From my upbringing, you know, we, we just learned at a very young age, whatever was best, it was all for the children. That's it, Pebbles, get her. <laughs> but this family home is not all that it seems. Take you away to the dustbin. <laughs> it's, it's a good talking point, you know, when people come to a party, that's the last Think thing you expect to see is a, a photo or a painting of Saddam. You know, it usually starts a conversation about a few things. Maybe put him in the toilet and get other people wondering. See, I look at it and I think he just looks cheeky in that picture. His hair's all nicely cropped, not like your para haircut. <laughs> a former paratrooper, Bo went out to Baghdad, Iraq, in 2004 to work as a private bodyguard. It was parked up outside Presidential Palace and the place was being trashed. What was left of the palace was just a few old uh, bits of furniture, paintings. This one caught my eye, and I saved him from the ashes of a bonfire. After years of shocking their friends and relatives, the couple now want to cash in on the painting to pay for a once-in-a-lifetime family holiday. What do you think of my friend out there? <laughs> but they can't resist showing it off one last time. A lot of people don't actually comment because they're quite shocked by it. I'm speechless. it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do they think we're followers, he's our friend? It's a mixed feeling. It's going very well. Pebbles is enjoying her party. People are enjoying Saddam Hussein. That's the main thing. <laughs> it's all about Saddam. <laughs> Say goodbye to Saddam. Everyone give a wave. Bye. Bye. All right. All right, see you later. Saddam. We're just getting up, so. I'm just making sure you leave without taking anything. <laughs> Today, Michelle is taking her painting to the pawn shop. Hello, how are you? On the front desk, Lawrence. Well, I can gather by um, that it's not jewellery. Yes, got a bit of an unusual oil painting. Oh, right. I was wondering if you could value for me. Yeah, well, I mean, let's okay. kind of look. Ooh, I get excited when I hear the word oil painting. <laughs> I think it's a little bit unusual. And, um, Ooh, maybe... I get worried when I hear unusual. <laughs> can we open maybe... it up? Yeah, sure. Oh, blimey. Oh, give me a heart attack, that is it, for that face coming back. When I first saw the Saddam Hussein painting, I was just totally gobsmacked. In my opinion, Saddam Hussein has all the traits of Adolf Hitler. They're both dictators, both detestable people. Well, it is unusual. It, it, obviously, as you know, the damage here, you've had face is damaged there, so that will affect the value. Yeah. But it is unusual. At least we've got the artist yeah, name down here, it's which got helps. The signature, which is... Um, but value-wise, I've got no idea. No. It's the first Saddam Hussein that I've ever come across. Um, it's always a first. See, it's always a first. Um, but also, my other concern is obviously the market mm. for it. So have you got an idea what you're looking for? To be honest, no. I think it would be nice to get it valued. Yeah. We all dream that it might be worth something, but to yeah. be honest, I don't have any... High expectations. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is take it off you. Now, I need about a week, ten days. Yes. And we'll try and get value for you. Look after him. I will look after him for you. Good. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing it in. OK, well, thank I'll you very much. I'll be in contact about ten days. Brilliant. I think he was quite shocked to see 
who it was. I mean, pawnbroking is not about taking the moral high road. If an item's got value, we'll sell it. But at the end of the day, we have to think, is this the right or wrong thing to do? It's either going to be worth next to nothing or go the other way, where it is worth a lot of money. Whatever the item coming in, storage is something the pawn shop always has to take into consideration. Sometimes when bigger pieces come through the door, the storage costs and transport costs outweigh the cost of the loan, so they really are not viable to do. Everything the pawn shop takes in as collateral for loans is held off-site under lock and key. And when it comes to cars, that means James's garage holds over £2 million worth of Bentleys, Porsches and Ferraris. But the business is changing. Hello, so how are you? Most people, when they think of pawnbroking, think of loans. But over 35% of our business is buying and selling. Are you looking to sell? Do you have any idea what you're looking for? I haven't a clue, to be quite honest. You've sold it before you'd even bought it, you had. That's what you're like. James amazes me still at the items he can shift. I looked at them and think, no way. But James takes it as a personal challenge to sell them. And it still amazes me how he manages it. But can James find a buyer for one of these? Toss me one of those uh, grenade pouches. Yeah. OK, that's great. 59-year-old John is the owner of a hovercraft which featured in the movie Die Another Day. It's a James Bond vehicle. How many people can say they own the James Bond vehicle? My dad loves the hovercraft. It's like his second baby. It gets a bit embarrassing. It just when he brings it up randomly in a conversation. These props I bought myself, they add to the, uh, the kudos of the hovercraft. Also, I've added these uh, 7.62 caliber machine gun bullets. But John's preparing to part with his prized possession for the one thing he loves more, okay. his 17-year-old daughter, Zoe. I wish to buy a car for my daughter. I'm looking for around about 14, 15,000 pounds. <laughs> It's 6 p.m. and James is on his way to test drive the hovercraft. He's hoping the trial will help him sell it to potential buyers. My gut feeling is this is really going to be a really, really tough thing to sell. All I know is when I get down there and I've had a little test drive of it, I'll be better placed, obviously, to, um, to be able to offer it to people that uh, might be interested in such an item. There she is. I've got a bit of a smile on my face, actually. <laughs> The thought of getting out on that hovercraft was really, really exciting for me, and I couldn't wait. Yeah. Looks brilliant. James gets most excited about anything that's got an engine that can roar and that's a, a boy's toy, basically. I've been rearing to go, I've been thinking yeah. about it. I think I even had a dream about it a couple of nights ago. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Hello, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. When I first set off in the hovercraft, it was a crazy sensation. After a couple of minutes, I was beginning to enjoy it, and we were flying around that field. <laughs> and suddenly, out of the blue, the engine cut. We got the AA coming out to us. Look, he's a reluctant mechanic, isn't he? Well, thanks for your patience, James. I think it's whetted your appetite now. But I haven't finished yet. I'm dying for some more. Can you actually believe this? I'm <laughs> stuck in a field. It's freezing cold. The thing's clapped out. I will have no hope of finding a buyer for this if it doesn't go properly, and it's on the button. And at the moment, it's far from on the button. 15 minutes of tinkering later, the hovercraft gets a second wind, and James gets to play Bond for himself. Oh, oh God. The thing took a bit of time to get used to, but I think within a few minutes I got the hang of it. Just as I was getting into it, 
the engines cut again and my heart sank. After yet another breakdown, is there any way back for John? When it was going, it was great, mm -hmm. but it's got its problems and they need to be rectified. If at any point you get it sorted out, do get back to me, because I'd love to show it to someone. Yes. And I think it's a saleable piece if it was running correctly. Well, that's if, a fair comment. If yes. you manage to sort it out, John, I'll be happy to come back down and have a look at it. I definitely think we can do that. OK. We know what the problem is now. Thanks Thank for you your very time. Much. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Cheers. Today has been a major disappointment. At the end of the day, it's not possible for me to bring someone to the table because it doesn't bloody go very well, does it? It's got to be on the button and it's got to work every single time. It's got to be a great bit of kit and it's not. Today, pawnbroking is almost a billion pound industry. It's probably worth more than my house. You just buy Bentleys every now and again, do you? <laughs> and staff at Prestige are always on the lookout for high end goods. They're looking to sell them for 45000 yes. Today, animal lover Rana's bringing in her vintage jewellery. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I've bought some jewellery in, which is why I bought the guard dog. Oh, my word. Wow. I'd better come out to you, hadn't I? Yeah, might be an idea. <laughs> Crikey, this That's is why nuts. I told you, that's why I've got him with me. How's that? It's, it's quite something. I'm speechless. It, I mean, it belonged to my great-grandparents. Absolutely incredible. I'm just at the top. I mean, it's, you couldn't get any better, really. We've got such a beautiful array of diamonds on this one. It's very hard it's... to get rid of. Well, why do you want to get rid of it? It's purely because I don't wear it. Yeah, no. And my son, let them have, have it now, the, yes. you know, as opposed to Absolutely. when I'm dead. So how much are you looking for? If I can get 20,000 for, for it, I'll be over the moon. I mean, this is, this is not something you see every day. I'm sure James is going to be jumping up and down. Thank you so much for popping in. Ah, it's a pleasure. And we'll look pleasure. after these. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. And new boy Jamo's not the only one excited by the pieces. Josephine, have a look at that. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Did you like that? Oh, my God. No, don't touch it, Oh, Joe. James, come not on. Me. Can I just get don't it a look bit nearer? Your look with your eyes. Each one is just really individually nice. Don't touch it, oh, please. Oh, Daisy. Yeah. This one's really unusual. It's not modern looking. It's vintage. I just imagine someone like almost royalty wearing it. Correct. I'm going to wear it later. <laughs> This is going to be potentially a massive thing for us. You can imagine, like, 150 years ago, the Queen going along in her carriage, giving it some of that, sporting that. I mean, that is a beautiful piece. It's unbelievable that we just come in and we've got it here in our little shop. It's amazing. Despite being impressed, next morning, James takes Rana's jewellery to a specialist valuer. With these vintage pieces, we do like to do a lot of research on them. They're not easy by any means to value, and the market for them is smaller because there's not so many buyers for that type of stuff. When it comes to assessing premium jewellery, James regularly turns to expert Ian. Ian is a really unusual character. He's blinged up to the eyeballs, but he really does know his stuff. James, <laughs> hi. How are you doing? How are you? You all right? Yes. I'm back and I've got some goodies for you. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Mm -mm. What do you think? Very good. Oh, that, I like that. Now, we looked at it and we saw that it was set in silver. Is that common? Typical of the period, late Victorian. So we're talking, about 1890, something like that? Yeah. You know, stones are pretty good colour. It's lovely. OK, we've got a smaller one there. Still quite pretty. Now, strangely enough, these stones aren't the same quality. It's very pretty. It's all original. That's fantastic. <gasps> Absolute pure Art Deco. Art oh, Deco, so mm. like the 20s, 30s, something like mm. that. Wonderful. Can you imagine that on my wrist? It's exceptional, isn't it? Wow. What quality. Look at that. When you look at how square and straight all the lines are, very typical of the Art Deco period, you know, hardly been used. Look at that. Nice and firm. Right. Lovely. What about the saleability? Very saleable. Very, very saleable. Fantastic. Yeah. Ian, thank you very much, mate. I'm armed with knowledge. I shall get back to the client. 
I'd love to know what happened. Well, I will do. I shall, mm. I shall keep you posted. Well, Rana's jewellery has been a real eye-opener. Some of those older pieces, you know, are not so easy to get rid of, but if we can find someone for it, then we can present Rana with some really nice figures. In central London, former footballer James is meeting some digital experts to work on his phone app. I'm James, that's me. How's it going, all right? Hello. Hi. He's hoping three watches from his Chelsea days will help further his fledgling business. I can see his history of all his entries. Realistically, I want 10 grand, you know? I want 10, 10 grand, and anything above that, I'd be really pleased. Anything below that, obviously, I'd be a bit devastated. What he doesn't know is that pawn shop boss James has added a fake Chanel to his collection to test new boy J-Mo. James can be quite mischievous at work, and I really did feel for J-Mo being put in that position. Watches is kind of an area of my expertise. You know, anything with a sort of quality name like Rolex or Panerai is right up my street. This is slightly more unusual, I think. Um, but uh, actually, first glance at this one, I'm not too sure about it, actually. It's a bit light. This one's going to need a little bit more research because I'm not too au fait on the Chanel. And on the Panerai, the actual watch has got a scuff mark on it. Generally speaking, there shouldn't actually be a blemish on the glass. How are you getting on, James? Oh, oh, James, brilliant. I was just going to see you, actually. Yeah. I've got a couple of question marks I'm a bit concerned about. What's that? Well, the Rolexes are fine. They're all singing or dancing, happy days. The Chanel, I'm slightly Lovely. concerned about. It just feels uh, a bit done. strange. Um, and there's a couple yeah. of char characteristics that I'm not too oh, sure about, so we need to look into that. So maybe one, once we get a battery in there, we'll see if the movement's pro proper. OK. Because if it's a fake, it won't be a Swiss-made movement. Spend your to... time. Don't rush it. I don't no. want you to rush it. No. Just make sure you're no. happy with them. No, I'm, right. I'm pretty cool on that, so we're cool. All right. OK. Awesome. I mean, J-Mo, obviously, bless him, he's working away, and he seems to... he spotted a little glitch, hasn't he? I can tell. Oh, good. Yeah. Nothing to do with the watches, though. Silly Billy. <laughs> Joking aside, this is an important test for J-Mo. Buying counterfeit goods could cost the pawn shop dearly. There is a risk with new staff. They're playing with my money and they're dealing with potential fakes. The worst thing that can happen to me is for them to do a dud deal. Keen not to make a mistake, J-Mo's getting the watches checked over by specialist expert Nick. Panerai's got a bit of an issue with its... Crown. James's scratched Panerai is first to come under scrutiny. A lot of the fakes, they forget to do black dates in the window. They tend to have white dates. So that's a telltale sign. Uh, and also, the screws that hold the straps on, the fakes never fit very well. So there's, you can see gaps in between the case and the screw. But the, what you need to look out for is like that highly high finish. Yes. It's all as it should be, really. We've got this Chanel here. OK. Normally, with fakes, you can spot something that's a bit crap. Yeah, I mean, that is really crude engraving on there. Feels OK, but we, we'll have to look inside. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Just what I thought. <laughs> Japanese Yes. Non-Swiss. Yeah, Japanese movement. Not what you would be paying all the money for. It's a good thing to get sorted, because I don't want one of my first jobs uh, to buy something that was fake. Wouldn't be very good, would it? Wouldn't be a good start, would it, Nick? No. The suspect watch, which I always had in the back of my mind it being not correct, is very much not correct. So uh, we're going to have to give it back to him and say, sorry, no deal. But obviously, on the other ones, we can uh, quote a price and uh, we'll see what we can sort out. Thanks, Nick. Good so, you. planted Thank fake you. aside, footballer James's Thank watches you. are genuine. Okay. Thanks very much. Cheers. But will they make him the money he needs to fund his business? Time to report back to the boss. Hi, guys. Hi. I've just got back from Nick. Got some goodies in here. Well, in fact, some things you've seen before, anyway. Oh, yeah. It saves the Rolexes and the... Uh... Now, we've got some good news and some slightly tricky news. Don't like ever to give bad news. OK. So, as we know, the Rolexes are spot on. We're happy days. Nick is fine with those. Um, you know, I mentioned to you I was a bit concerned about the Chanel. It wasn't working. Yes. Well, it does turn out to be a fake. Yeah. So, my estimations were correct. Jamo, are you saying this isn't real? Yes. 
Well done. It's not. Well, well done. How do you know that? Well, because I... <laughs> <laughs> No. I bought it off a looky looky man in Marbella. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we'd come in handy one day, you see. That's it's a, a good bloody test. it's a bloody good fake, isn't it? It is actually. And we just slipped it in. Okay. And we were really praying that you would actually see that. <laughs> and we were laughing about it, and it's a bit of a cool trick, but I'm so glad you spotted it. I did feel a little bit bad about setting JMO up, but there was a genuine reason for this little prank. Very cheeky manoeuvre by James to slip in a bit of a cowboy watch. Uh, well spotted by me to find it. Knowing that JMO had spotted that fake gave me a little bit more confidence in his ability. There's no doubt about it. For the pawn shop, finding a buyer for designer watches is pretty straightforward, but a painting of a deposed dictator is a different story. Isn't that one of the Marx Brothers? Looks like Gaucho. No, not Gaucho. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure it's not Gaucho, Marx. I think it's something we've got to be worried about people's feelings and the clients we deal with. Who would know whether that's worth anything? I mean, well, uh... what we need to know, first of all, is to look at the artist and obviously find that it is actually a painting. It does look genuine. Yeah, well, it's genuine. It's the problem um... is, no problems. And that's the issue. It is odd, but there are a lot of people out there yeah. that do find this sort of stuff interesting. It's yeah. weird. Well, if you can prove what it is, there's a market for it, but is it a market of people we want to find? Well, look, I'll tell you what, before we dismiss it, do a bit of research. It's interesting anyway. Yeah. I don't know the value of it. We'll get to the bottom of that and find out. Okay. I don't really know about that sort of stuff, and I don't know if we should really be getting involved with it. You've got to question the uh, moralities of actually making money out of stuff like that. Before making a decision, Lawrence takes the painting of questionable origin to local art expert Ben. Hi, Ben, how are you doing? Hi, Lawrence, how are you? I'm enjoying the sun. Good to see you again. I know, but I guarantee you haven't seen anything like this. Yeah. We just want to find out what we can about it. My word. It's quite, yeah, quite a crude painting, probably painted from a photograph, I would say. It's definitely not printed. It's it's an original painting. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to um, have a worth based on its yeah. artistic merit. No. Exactly. <laughs> if, if she can provide any evidence of where it came where from. it came from, it could have a strong value to somebody who mm. um, who collects. There's lots of war memorabilia. Uh, it's a piece of history. Yeah. I imagine it came out of Iraq yeah. at some point. I can't imagine anybody faking this. Exactly. It's an interesting find. Yeah. Thanks, Doc Ben. There's a strong market, particularly on the internet, and there's certain auction houses around the world that specialise in war memorabilia. Um, so it's, it, it would be um, quite a quick sale should they have the correct ownership documents and um, provenance. Even if the painting is potentially valuable, will Lawrence and the team be able to find anyone who wants to buy it? End of a busy month at the pawn shop. You're doing nothing, basically. I'm doing nothing. OK. New boy Jamo seems to be settling in well. My first impressions of Jamo was Bart Simpson hits 40. He's got a really wacky sense of humour and he's great fun. I speak really loud. Hello. <laughs> I think you could say that sort of customer service is my middle name. JMO's last challenge of the month is to give footballer James a price for his three watches. These watches are well placed in the in the marketplace and really they're highly recognised, highly sought after watches, they're very good quality brands. They relatively hold their value to a certain extent. It does depend on the model, obviously, on all these things. Um, but for sure, the sort of Rolexes that we have here, the two Daytonas and the Panerai are, are, are proper top-end quality watches, well-established watches. Hopefully, when I quote some prices, he's going to be all right with it. James is hoping to get at least £10,000 to help promote his new business. Hopefully, it's good news. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, is that James? Yeah, yeah, it's James, hi. Hi, it's... Jamo from Prestige. Hi, how are you? Hi, yeah, good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. You've got some fabulous watches here. I mean, Rolex, for sure, a highly recognised watch. We always got to take into account, obviously, there is always going to be a slight decrease in value from once you purchase it. Really, if we were sort of thinking of buying them, yeah. um, this sort of area of sort of 
18 to 19,000 approximately. Fantastic. Um, it's the sort of area of figure that we're looking at. I'm, I, I'm not sure what sort of thing you had in mind, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. so that's that, way that's more than I expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah way more than I expected. Oh, way more. Oh, God, yeah, probably quite too much. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 that's happy for me. No, no, you can't yeah. take that back now. You've said it. <laughs> no, no, oh, God. Yeah, no, sure. Perfect. I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy about that. Really, Thank really you. happy. So much good. more than I expected. Good yeah, stuff. I'm good. All right. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Oh, that went well. Brilliant. That'll, that'll keep James happy. That's a satisfied customer. I think getting the money's tables are turning for me. You know, I had a really, really bad three or four years with my football. I think all I can do now is look forward and uh, hopefully make the business a massive success and the money that Prestige are offering me are going to obviously help that in so many ways. Also waiting for news is Michelle, the owner of the painting of Saddam Hussein. This has caused a lot of controversy. There's always a market for items like this. James and I have, you know, discussed this on several occasions, and, you know, we, we, we've come to a decision. Hey, Tom, are you OK? OK? I do think it's going to be interesting. They might have found some more information on it. We've had it for several years now, so if it is worth something, it's been sitting in the cupboard. Maybe why didn't we get rid of it before? <laughs> Hello. Hello, is that Michelle? Oh, hello, Lawrence. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yourself? All right, I've been long, oh, what, a couple of weeks for you, I should think, waiting to find out the result. Yeah. How is the old chap? Oh, he's fine. We've looked after him well for you, because I know you've got a great sentimental attachment. <laughs> the problem we had initially was the provenance. I mean, provenance on paintings is the most important um, aspect of work. It gives you a paper trail, it's like the passport. Yes. The problem we got is who do we sell it to? Yes. Um, it's a niche market, isn't it's it? It's a very niche market. I mean, items like this, which are obviously basically war memorabilia, to the right person can be worth a lot of money. But then we've got to look at ourselves and see if these are sort of clients or people we want to be dealing with. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. Because obviously we've got to look at the ethical side of it as well. Yes. Now, anyway, we've, we've come to a final decision on it. OK. Um, we, we cannot value it without the provenance. So, basically, it's not good news, I'm afraid. We will be returning Saddam for you to use at your barbecues. OK. Um, so, unfortunately, we can't make an offer or, yeah. or, or, or a loan or to buy it from you. So, sorry about that. I mean, so, I hope you're not too disappointed. But those no, are... no, no, there's no disappointment. It's more sort of like to us as a, a giggle point. My husband and I have just had the debate whether it was the Ivy or McDonald's. Well, it looks <laughs> obviously it's McDonald's tonight. <laughs> I don't think you've got enough money from McDonald's, obviously. No, I don't think we have got McDonald's. OK, then. Well, no, lovely speaking to you. And yeah, thanks Andrew. for being your eye to me. Yeah, no worries. Thank you on this occasion. OK, well, thank you. Nah, no worries. Look after yourself, Michelle. Right, bye-bye. Cheers, bye-bye. Yeah, bye -bye. They can't really value it because of who he is. It's too hot to handle. So it looks like Saddam Hussein's going to stay with us for a little bit longer. I'll be glad to get him home. <laughs> Bring him home. At the end of the day, she's not a disappointed client. And in fact, I think she'll get more enjoyment out of it now, and then it has no value at all. Boss James is making the trip into London to give animal lover Rana the news about her vintage jewellery. I've got some really interesting news for her. Um, she's got some amazing jewellery and I think she's going to be highly delighted with the information we're going to give her. Fritz, come. The minimum I'd like is about 20,000. I haven't got huge expectations. It could be worth one pound if it's paste. It could be worth whatever if it isn't paste. Rana, hi. Hello, James. Come How on in. How are you doing? Not too bad. Good, Not good. Bad. Let's go through to the lounge. Right. Well... Right. Look, we've, uh, Let's get your bits and pieces out. Right. Well, look, we've done some work, as you, as mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this Art Deco um, bracelet is particularly nice. It's beautiful, and this would be a thing that we could sell almost straight away. And we've got clients looking for this type of jewellery. Right. Um, we think that, potentially, there's quite a bit of money there. Um... I don't know what it is you were looking for. I mean, I spoke to 
Mm -hmm. warrant, and a uh, figure of 20 grand was... Yeah, just 20. I, I mean, I have no idea what they were. Basically, you've got in excess of £300,000 worth of jewellery here. Uh, You're jewelry. joking. I'm not, no. It's quite astounding. Shit. Yes. The, well, the... <sighs> Are you sure, 300,000? Um, yeah, that's retail, so um, that's not what I'm suggesting yeah. that we yeah. can... If you wanted to sell these pieces today, through us, we could quite easily achieve £200,000 for the pieces. Um, I'm shocked, because yeah. I just thought it was about £20,000 worth. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I hope yeah. You're, uh, you're pleased with that. I'm over the moon. <laughs> oh, thank you! <laughs> you seem pretty brilliant. shocked, but... Uh... I'm shocked. I'm just... Gobsmacked. Words fail me, and it takes a lot for words to fail me. Wait till my to... son finds out. <laughs> you probably want all the money. <laughs> you might want a stiff drink this afternoon. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you ever so much. Hello. See you Bye. later. Bye. The question now is how much of her Hi. new windfall will Rana be passing on to son Andy for his business? You lose it. I don't know. I'm not sure. How much do you reckon? Uh, well, judging by the grin on your face, it's obviously a lot more than ten grand. What's it Probably worth? Then? Obviously, it's good. Three hundred. Three hundred thousand pounds. Retail. That's a lot, a lot of cash. I mean, it's just a ridiculous amount of money. She seemed to be truly in shock. Uh, I don't think it actually registered with her the true value. I'm sure it'll hit her in the coming hours, uh, just the true value of those pieces. The figure is just phenomenal. It is life-changing. Next time on Posh Porn. <laughs> what the hell is it? That's pretty spectacular. I'm hoping I would gain 185,000. We've done all that work. Maybe she's changed her mind.